The best time of year at Epcot is back. It's food and wine, baby. Hey there, ma'am, fam. Epcot's International Food and Wine Festival has returned. We will be here for the next few days eating our way around the over 30 food kiosks, so grab your festival passports and let's go. This year, the Food and Wine Festival decided to start the same night as Halloween Horror Night, so we have not been yet. Super excited to check out the festival. I've heard great things about a lot of the new booze, and I'm very excited to get eaten. Make sure you grab your passport on the way in. This is going to have all of the menus for you, as well as, most importantly, Emile's fromage montages in the back. More on that in a moment. And do note that on the My Disney Experience app, there's not only a digital festival guide, but there's also the allergy-friendly menus if you need to take a look at those. Alan, what's one returning dish and one new dish you're excited to eat this year? Returning dish is the Hawaii pork slider, of course. And the new dish, there's a braised short rib with some goat cheese polenta at Earth Eats that I'm eyeing. Molly, what is one returning dish and one new dish you are excited about? I'm very excited about the new pumpkin ravioli at the new booth, Forest and Field. And I'm excited for the return of griddled cheese in Greece, Pau de Queijo in Brazil, Schnicken Noodlen in Germany, basically all the cheese-based dishes. You're just going on your own fromage montage. Yes. As with every year, we asked you, the ma'am fam, what you spend when you come to food and wine, and you said $100 per person. So that is what we are giving each of us for a total of $200 for this food and wine festival. The wrist gift cards have been acquired, which makes it way too easy to give Mickey Mouse money. And while we were in Gateway Gifts, also checked out this year's Remy's Ratatouille Hide and Squeak prizes. This is that cute little scavenger hunt you can purchase at the Disney merchandise locations. It's $9.99 before tax or any kind of discount. And it comes with some stickers, and you're going to search for Remy hidden around Epcot as he's got different ingredients for his famous ratatouille. Once you complete the scavenger hunt, you return it to a Disney gift shop, and they will give you a prize. Prize this year for completing the scavenger hunt, quite cute. Are it's these hard plastic bowls, and you get to choose from Mickey, Minnie, Figment, or what seems to be most popular so far this year, Remy. I say it every festival, but I love these little scavenger hunts because it's a great way to get the kids involved and have them be excited to walk around and explore World Showcase while the parents get to eat and drink and everybody's happy. Well, I hope that your tray tables are in the full upright and locked position because we are headed to my favorite airport terminal, also known as Communicore Hall for festival favorites and macetizers. Outside of Communicore Hall, you might think there are plenty of tables, but right now it's Molly table time. And Molly is holding for us the kielbasa and potato pierogies with caramelized onions and sour cream. Now, Festival Favorites features dishes from booths past. So in this instance, these kielbasa are from Poland, which has not been around for a few years. I should also note at Festival Favorites, you can find the pimento cheese on the menu, which was one of my favorites when I tried it and is a great shareable if you enjoy that type of Southern cooking. Okay, let's dive in. We're going to start with a pierogi. Mmm. Well, I can see why we brought that back. The potato is cooked perfectly. It's almost like a really fluffy mashed potato. The pierogi dough, very light, not super chewy. Guys, sour cream, I don't know if you've heard of it before. It's delicious. The sausage itself has a lot of snap. Very herbaceous. Tastes like sage. Very good. And the caramelized onion is a condiment I think I need more often, honestly. It's a, it's a really good accompaniment to a lot of stuff. This is a really nice savory dish. As I nearly lick this plate clean, all these flavors come together and make it feel really homey. It's like really a comfort dish. Well, here in Communicore Hall, there was once quite a plethora of tables, but during festival season, naturally, there is not. And instead, we are here at Trash Can Table Time. It's Trash Can Table Time. Ba -ba -da. Now departing. <laughs> All right. Food & Wine loves a macaroni and cheese themed booth. And this year we've got macetizers and it's got four different varieties of mac and cheese. It's thundering outside. That will not stop me from eating this delicious truffle mac and cheese. That's the one we selected. It's got some truffle on there. It's got some cavatappi pasta, some breadcrumbs. I love the breadcrumbs. They're not too salty, but they are definitely seasoned and they're adding a nice crispiness. I also love that they use cavatappi pasta. I think that's the best pasta for macaroni and cheese, personally. It's got this nice, creamy, cheesy, rich sauce, and then you've got that nice, very distinct truffle flavor. My only thing, I wish there was more truffle flavor because it doesn't seem to be spread throughout the dish. It's only in the bites where you get the little bit of truffle. So I wish they had maybe used a little more truffle oil throughout, but otherwise, 
very tasty. And at some point, I'm sure I'll eat the other macaroni and cheeses, but this is a delightful booth. Now, I also want to highlight that that mac and cheese was our first stamp on Emile's Fromage Montage. They do these food crawls at each of the Epcot festivals with a different theme. And then if you get five of any of these items on here, any combination, you can get five different things. You can get five of all the same thing. You can do it over multiple days. But once you get five stamps in your book, then you get to redeem it for a prize. And this one is my favorite because I have truly been training my whole life to do nothing but win a prize for eating cheese. It's starting to rain a scooch, so we've dashed across to the Odyssey Pavilion right here at the entrance of World Showcase to visit Muppet Labs because Dr. Bunsen Honeydew and Beaker are here with Brew Wing Lab. This was a booth that debuted last year and I'm so glad they brought it back because we honestly all need more Muppets in our lives. Now because it is the Muppets, it's a little wacky, it's a little fun, and they're gonna have weird things on the menu like the notorious pickle milkshake from last year, which don't worry friends, it's back. We didn't order it though because we're gonna drink pickle alcohol instead for some reason. For several festivals in years past, they have turned this building into one of the booths. And I always think it's so fun because I love to see how they theme it. And again, the Muppets, who doesn't love them? I love looking at all the signs along the walls. It's their blueprints and all their scientific experiment notes for all the flavor creations they're working on. And here we have the influencer carrying not only a tray of unique beverages, but a plate of extremely spicy meats. He did it with ease. We are very impressed. We're also very impressed by the influencers. We are very impressed by the influencers' bravery in wearing a white shirt on such an occasion. With such saucy wings, we do not want him to spot us. Let us observe as he sets up his apparatus. From the brewing lab at the Odyssey Building, we have picked up the unnecessarily spicy yet extremely tasty Carolina Reaper Pepper Curry Wings with creamy cucumber raita, as well as the beverage flight, that is indeed what it is named. From left to right for me, we have the Coppertail Brewing Smoked Lager, Kiel Farms Elderberry Serrano Hard Cider, and the Three Daughters Brewing Pickle Hard Seltzer. Also noted, but not on the menu, a whole host of napkins for wiping fingers. All right, we are going to sample the unnecessarily spicy wings. Do you want a flat or a drum? I would like a flat. I should note they had a different version of these last year, also called unnecessarily hot, but they had a different sauce on them. Yes, this is a Carolina Reapers, which is a very, very hot pepper. They have them in the land pavilion. Up until we recently it was- sauce. That's, that's the creamy sauce. That's the one that helps you. I know, I'm helping oh, you. Oh. We also have ranch to be fair, but I'm gonna go in pretty raw here. Cheers. Are you gonna say the Carolina Reapers? The Carolina Reaper is the hottest pepper on the planet, or it was until Pepper Rex came in here. Thank you, Puckerbutt Farms, and Hot Ones for giving me that knowledge. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Oh. That cucumber is delicious. I want to compliment the chicken wing itself. It's a good wing. It's cooked really well. It's nice and moist, flavorful, crispy skin, and yeah. Spicy. It's spicy. I also think that we perhaps have ruined ourselves to hot sauces before. It's true. I mean, it's hot. This is why you get the pickle milkshake to wash it down. It acts like the ranch. You want a pickle seltzer instead? I guess. I think I like last year's better because they were a little bit fruitier. These are just hot. It's a good wing, but it's hot. Oh, I like that. Oh. Oh, we have a difference of opinion. Oh my god. No. Go for me. It tastes like drinking pickle juice. Oh, well that's probably why I like it. Can I help you with this real quick? Tastes like beer that went into a smoker. Oh, interesting. Like it tastes like beer, it's a lager, but it tastes like you put it in a smoker like an old fashioned. It's fine. It's, it's odd, but it's fine. I think of the three, the least odd. This is elderflower Serrano for some reason. Mm. 
kind of like it. That's good. It's hotter than I expected it to be, but it's also sweeter than I expected it to be. So it's balancing out, and it's distinctly sweet, like almost black currant flavor. It reminds me of when you add black currant to a snake bite, but then it's hit. You're hit with a, a heat. Yeah, it's really, really. That's really tasty. Again, I think if you are spice averse, avoid this. Definitely, Definitely avoid, avoid those. Um, but for someone who's a spice lover and perhaps wants to taste a Carolina Reaper in a setting that's not eating the pepper alone, which by the way, I wouldn't recommend, um, this is a good secondary option. I think those are good wings. I think this booth is fun. Uh, I do want to shout out the pickle chips, which are back on the menu. We didn't get them because stomach space and money are, uh, we're on a, we're trying to stick to a budget and you know, got to eat a lot of things, but the pickle chips are really, really good. So I'd recommend those to anybody. These things, if you want to try something a little wacky and fun. All right, just left the Odyssey building and next up would be the Noodle Exchange. We're gonna skip that this year. Had it last year and it was fine, but nothing really jumped off the menu this year. So we are instead headed to a fan favorite and one of ours, Mexico. We have picked up our delicious eats from Mexico and there aren't any tables around here this year, which means it's time for another rendition of Trash Can Table Time. It's Trash Can Table Time. Ba -ba -da. Hola. Mm. Now, Alan walked away to get some B-roll and left me unsupervised in the Mexico queue. And so I did in fact stray from our list of items we were gonna get. We were definitely gonna get the tostada de cabron that is a shrimp tostada, but I couldn't resist the flauta, uh, the beef flauta as well. And then this was on our list as well, a poblano margarita. All right, this is the tostada de camarones, which is tempura battered shrimp atop a fried corn tortilla with guacamole, cabbage, chipotle aioli, diced mango, and chili lime powder. Ooh. This is going well. It's not on your nose. Do you have pocket napkin? I got bra fork. No pocket napkin. No though. pocket napkin. That is phenomenal. Oh my goodness. First of all, this tostada, it could be stale, but it's not at all. You can tell that it was fresh. And then you've got this nice crispy shrimp, not too heavy, lightly fried, but they've got a little zip to them as well. And then you've got this nice creamy, really delicious, not surprising guacamole. I like the crunch from the cabbage, a little sweetness from the mango, not super hot, not super spicy, but just very, very flavorful. This is awesome. Probably making my best of the fest. And I'm going to sample the flauta de barbacoa. This is fried tortillas with barbacoa beef, topped with salsa verde, crema mexicana, and queso fresco. All right. Mm. The corn tortilla, nice, fresh. I enjoy the taste of a very well-prepared corn tortilla, and that is that. The barbacoa itself has some nice flavor, like it tastes a little bit like adobo, and there's some light chili, but it's a little dry, if I'm being honest. I think, with the cheese on top, with the salsa verde, it really does help moisten that up, but on its own, it is a little dry. Still a very flavorful dish though. Mm. Okay, so I just sampled the tostada. Of the two, get the tostada. It is far and away the better option, wow. And last up, we are splitting the poblano margarita. This is made with Lalo, tequila blanco, absolo corn whiskey, lime juice, ancho reyes verde chili poblano liqueur, it's a mouthful, and a salted rim. I'm gonna go for the side because I don't care for a salted rim but I do like spicy things. Oh. We are so back with Mexico cocktails. I feel like the last few festivals, I haven't loved the margaritas out here. They've been a little bit too sweet for me, but as someone who likes a spicy margarita, that's pretty darn good. Now it has been sitting here while we've been filming, so it's a little bit watered down. I would recommend drinking it quicker, but it's light, it is refreshing. It's just got a little bit of that subtle heat to balance out any sweetness. That is a nice cocktail. Ni hao, we have made it to China where I'm gonna try the Shanghai scallion noodles with shrimp. That's the whole description. I don't know exactly what the flavor profiles are gonna be, but I do remember they had a shrimp noodle dish on the menu years ago and I loved it. So I'm hoping that this is similar to that. And of course, in an effort to try and review new things, we grabbed this instead of the chicken dumplings, which are returning this year. Those are also one of my favorites every year. So I can put my Molly stamp of approval on those, but for now, we're gonna try the scrimps, which I'm doing my best to navigate with the chopsticks. Mm. 
Mm. These are very good. Let's start with the shrimp. The shrimp are lightly breaded, a little bit heavier than the shrimp I had in Mexico, which is surprising because they maybe don't look it. Um, so the first bite I had, I basically just tasted this nice, lightly breaded, but still delicious shrimp. Not much of the noodle. The noodle itself is my favorite part. It's cooked really nicely. It feels like it's very simple. I highly recommend making sure you get a scallion in the bites. So um, it feels like it's got sesame oil, soy sauce, and then you've got that nice little crispness from the scallion. If I were to make this... If I were to make this, she says. <laughs> if, if I were to eat this at home that someone made, could be me, would be Alan. If uh, I were to make a note about this dish, I actually wish it was not fried shrimp. If I'm remembering correctly, it didn't used to be. And um, I think that it's a little bit carby with like the fried shrimp and the nudes. Um, but the noodles are very good and a nice classically simple, delicious dish. All right, at India, we have picked up the chicken tikka masala with fennel spiced yogurt and some naan bread. I have to say, I'm pretty impressed by the portion size of this. It smells so good. You smell the garam masala really, really well. Let's be clear here. This is a hot meat and rice dish on a muggy floor today, but I'm happy about it. This is spiced so well throughout. The chicken has been stewed for so long, it is tender and falling apart. It is not dry. The taste of turmeric, masala, allspice, cardamom, all throughout, and really fluffy white rice that is not overcooked and rubbery. And you know what? The naan bread, I'm gonna use it to soak up all of the sauce. Oh my gosh. This is a this is the best of the fest. Wow. Our next stop was the refreshment outpost where we are mixing things up and finally trying a sweet treat. This is the chocolate amarula mousse with white chocolate and it looks like a giant zebra dome, which is what I'm assuming it's going to taste like as well. Look at this. All right, here we go. Oh yeah. Oh, there's so much chocolate in there. And I'm going to try to get it's on like a cracker cookie biscuit thing. So I'm gonna try to get a piece of that. Much to my delight, it does in fact taste like a giant zebra dome, which are a signature dessert over at Animal Kingdom Lodge. You've got this very delicious mousse right here, topped with a little white chocolate. And then it's got this kind of thicker, like fudgier brownie almost layer. And then I like the nice crispy biscuit on the bottom. I love the flavor of Amarula, which is very present here. Amarula is a liqueur made in Africa, and it's from a tree, and the bottle, I've told this before, but I love this story, the bottle has an elephant on it, because the elephants uh, will actually run into the Amarula tree until the fruit falls off and eat it and get drunk. And I like the idea of the elephants just like vibing on the savannah and like having a good time with their friends. If you've never tried a zebra dome, this is really, really fun. I will say, I don't know if kids can eat this. They can't eat zebra domes. So they didn't carb me, but I'm a thousand years old. So... I ask if you want to feed this to someone under 21, but regardless, if you like zebra domes, you'll love this. And it's just a perfect, distinct Disney dessert. I love it. Continuing our way around World Showcase, and we've made it to the Alps and Germany. Now we are going to be skipping the Alps. Their menu has not changed. And while I will still put my stamp of approval on the warm raclette cheese, and that is on a meal's fromage montage. Again, we're trying to mix things up a little bit. And uh, if I'm going to eat a cheesy dish in this vicinity, there's only one to choose. We went to Germany and picked up the Schnickenudeln, which, you know, feels similar to other years, and the Schofferhofer Lemon Zest Hefeweizen. Now the Schnickenudeln is also a part of Emile's Fromage Montage. And um, yeah, I know we said we were trying to get new dishes, but uh, this is one we get every year because it's one of my faves. So in an effort to make it new and fun and fresh content, Alan's going to review it, not me, because that's totally different. Totally different. Chicken noodlin is a German noodle and cheese dish with some cubed ham. And I'm only going to eat so much so that I am, can ensure that Molly has enough to her liking. Very dense dish made of noodles and cheese with a little bit of ham. It's really hard not to like this. It's so simple. I mean, what's, this brings back times in my childhood. I'm like, I just want pasta noodles, butter, and cheese. You're not too far off here. This is just the adult version of that. And it's still good. Molly's best of the fest. <laughs> just put it out there. Don't even have to bite it. And I know it's on there. Look at that delicious crispity topping. Oh, that's the best part. Look at that. 
Now, we will be reviewing something new from the German booth, and that is Schofferhofer's Lemon Zest Hefeweizen. You've often heard us rant about Schofferhofer's grapefruit beer because it's juice, not beer. It has a 2% ABV. Uh, for legal reasons, please don't give that to your children, but it's for kids. And but they'd probably be fine. They'd probably be okay. They take but a great. Don't, don't give it to them. Don't give it to them. It could work really well to put people down to naps, but also I'm not saying don't you should do that. Don't give it to them. Yeah. But it's juice. Cheers. So this is if a lemon shandy mm -hmm. and a Hefeweizen beer had a baby. Yeah. If you are a fan of both of those flavors, then this is going to be right up your alley. So a lemon shandy is typically a beer that's just had some lemonade added to it or throughout the brewing process. And Hefeweizen beers are wheat beers. Sometimes people say that there's a flavor that's lightly akin to banana. I don't think that's what's going on in here. It's mostly like a light wheat flavor. So it's like a zesty lemon wheat. Really flavorful. I like that a lot. I just want to say... I just want to say that this beer is delicious, and I might put this on my best of the best, too. Because it is like, it, it's like a nice, perfect, it's a thousand degrees outside, refreshing beer. To the discerning viewer, you might notice that Molly's best of the best list is growing a little bit like a CVS receipt. Listen, much like dollar off coupons for products you'll never need. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm here to provide you with helpful information. <laughs> and um, I'm sorry that everything's a banger. But except pickle seltzer. <laughs> All right, now, hold on. And as always, I love checking out this train station here at the edge of Germany just before you get into Italy. It's just so cool to see all of these citizens out and about. And what I think is so interesting is that the little banners are actually food and wine banners that match the food and wine festival every year. You know, I don't see Molly, yeah. our friend who's normally kind of face down on the ground Wait, over here. Lost. Yeah, Lars is not here. No, but what I do see, if you look in that book, it's very hard to see. I see. There's a lizard. And with the forced perspective of this mini train station, these people are in trouble. There, it's a dinosaur. It's Godzilla. Yeah, that's a that's a full-on dinosaur with those people. That is wildlife at work. Run! Run, citizens of tiny Germany. Hola, from España. We've gone to the Spain booth here and picked up their charcuterie. Spain loves to do a variety of charcuterie at their booth. They've done it in a cup before. They've done some different things. But this year, I was particularly drawn to it because it has pen con tomate. It's called glass bread, um, freshly made, and then it's got this beautiful, very simple, like tomato and olive oil on it. Then uh, you've got some jamón and some manchego cheese. This feels like something I'm gonna be very into, and it was on Emile's fromage montage. So I'm gonna assemble myself a little bite here. Look at that, ooh, that's a lot of jamón. This is like my ideal meal right here. Is this the most exciting thing you're going to get at Food & Wine? No. It's a small charcuterie board, but is this some of my favorite foods altogether? Absolutely yes. I love this style of bread. It's crispy on the outside, but it still kind of melts in your mouth when you get in there. And it's got a nice natural sweetness to the tomato on there, and then the saltiness and nuttiness of the ham and the cheese together. Simple deliciousness. Again, there's much more exciting and unique things for you to try, but this tastes like a sampler platter from Haleo and I love it. And from something truly delicious to Italian style nachos at a booth we normally skip at festivals. To be clear, that's Italian nachos from Italy, a country known for their nacho production. In fact, when I picked this up, I said to the cast member, how is it? And she laughed and said, it's not Italian. It's pasta chips, meat ragu sauce, and cheese. So, here we go. Oh, you're going, you're just doing it. Yeah, let's they're just, nachos, right? They're, they're something. All the, also, I should point out, this is not part of our budget. We're, we're doing this for fun on its own. Partly because we pulled you on Instagram and you told us to. So, here we are. I'm upset. <laughs> I'm still chewy. I can think of a lot of things you should spend $9 on. A VHS, Barbie's Dream Day at Epcot. Mm. Probably $9 on eBay. That's gonna be a no for me, dog. Here's the thing, the meat sauce is fine. It's 
not as good as if you go eat at Via Napoli or Tutto Italia. It doesn't taste as homemade and delicious as that, but it's fine if you were like, I need some meat sauce. And there's a lot of cheese on it, which I appreciate. But the problem is all of it. Are the pasta chips. Because pasta is not chips. Now, I, maybe another restaurant has done this and done it well, but to me, it, they were very chewy. It's just like Italy is such good food in there. I really am racking my brain trying to describe this in a way that is coherent and um, covers everything well enough. And if you like this, you know, good for you. It's going to be one less portion that, you know, you're going to have to fight for, for me. Uh, it's just not great. And it is, a, it is a combination of textures and flavors that I think belong perhaps when the pasta is, is boiled. Great news. Hot dogs are next. So. In the peak of the day. And before we get to hot dogs, we are going to stop at Joffrey's, the cart in the American Adventure Pavilion, to try not one but two of their specialty food and wine beverages. Now, a big thank you to Joffrey's, who sent me a little card, as I am one of their seasonal flavor ambassadors. It's uh -huh. a title I hold very near and dear to my heart. Uh, so they sent us a card to try all of the food and wine beverages. So big thanks to them. So these are not in our budget. This is the Coconut Banana Cream Pie Latte. It is espresso, milk, coconut, and banana syrup topped with whipped cream and toasted coconut. You can only get this at this cart right there at American Adventure. This is the annual pass holder secret menu latte. You can get this at any of the World Showcase Joffreys. It is called a French Kiss. It is espresso, milk, mocha, and then topped with whipped cream and chocolate. Cheers to coffee. You know, someone who doesn't like banana, I wasn't thinking I was going to dig with that, but as someone who loves coconut, I mostly taste the coconut. And it tastes like a coconut iced latte. Uh, it's a little bit on the sweeter side for me, so if I were to get this one again, which I think I would because I like coconut so much, I'd just go a little bit lighter on the milk and the syrup. But honestly, that's delicious. And now for this. Well, that tastes like dessert. It tastes like coffee and chocolate. This is uh, something I'd rather have than a lot of desserts around World Showcase. And if you like sweet coffees, this is going to be right up your alley. Moving further into the American Adventure Pavilion and definitely not delaying the inevitable of getting hot dogs at the America booth, we're going to talk about the Eat to the Beat concert series, one of the best parts of the Food and Wine Festival. These are nightly concerts that happen here in the American Garden Theater. They happen three times a night, and they feature a variety of bands. Maybe they're not the most popular bands now, but they were probably popular in your childhood or teen years. We've got a whole variety that appeals to everybody, from Sugar Ray, looks like they're performing tonight, which is quite fun. We've also got bands such as Hanson. Fun fact, that was the first concert I ever went to. Hoobastank, Yellow Card, Smash Mouth, 98 Degrees, and most importantly, Boys to Men. These concerts are totally free, included with your park ticket, so come rock out to a favorite band of yesteryear. Now, it is unsurprising that some of these concerts are more popular than others, and people will start lining up pretty early. It's only like 3.45 right now, and there's already quite a few people out there for Sugar Ray, and the lines get much bigger for bands like Joey Fatone and Friends, 98 Degrees, and Hanson, so just keep that in mind. Now, if there is a band you're particularly excited to see, you can book an Eat to the Beat dining package, which is dining at several different restaurants around the park, including Akershus, the Beer Garden, Coral Reef, Spice Road Table, and you get a reserved viewing section. Those prices vary, but they are a little bit pricier. For a less expensive option, day of, there are dining packages at Regal Eagle, Craftsman, Smokehouse, and Barbecue here in the American Adventure Pavilion. But keep in mind, those are first come, first serve and will sell out on popular concert days. And now, before we continue moving on to the hot dog, Kiosk, I'm going to perform a Boys to Men set. Once we get it done, it's over with. You got to eat it. So why are you delaying? I just assume I'll have to eat it too. That's true. Come on, let's go. A little behind the scenes. For, for the first part of this day, Molly's been going and ordering the food while I've been gathering the B-roll. But in protest, one, and two, I don't necessarily know if I trust her to actually order the food. Uh, I'm going to Flavors of America to pick up our hot dog today. <laughs> Look at how excited she is. Yeah, look at that. Now at Flavors of America, there are four different styles of hot dog. They are New York, Chicago, Southwest, and what I picked up 
the Carolina style hot dog. This is an all beef hot dog with chili, coleslaw, and yellow mustard in a brioche bun. I'm ready to dive into that. I also picked up the beer flight. This is from left to right, the brewery Omegang Farm Fresh Ale conditioned on wildflower honey, the Goose Island Beer Company Hazy Beer Hug IPA, and the Wicked Weed Fest Beer. Let's get into it. Molly's excited, let's go. In all reality, I picked up the Carolina style because there was the least amount going on here. Let's get into it. Hmm. Huh. Now I have to imagine it's called Carolina style because Carolina style barbecue sauce is also mustard based and there is yellow mustard on this dog. Brioche bun is lovely. Very light. The hot dog, all beef, I think is very nice, cooked very well. Good snap. You don't really taste like a meaty chili. It's just like a little bit of a smoky extra that's going on to the top of the uh, hot dog. What I mostly taste is the coleslaw, which is a nice, refreshing uh, break from a lot of the richness. And then the zesty mustard on top. Yeah, I'd get this again. Want some? For science, I guess. <laughs> the coleslaw is good. <laughs> I'm going to drink beer now. Now, the beer flight. I'm going to start with the one that has honey in it. I will start with the Wicked Weed Fest beer. Cheers. You can definitely taste that there's honey in that. It has that kind of almost syrupy goodness to the honey flavor, um, and it's balancing out a very nice, crisp, classic uh, ale. I like that. You'll enjoy that. Oh. The Fest beer is a wheat ale, so it's very wheat forward. It's all it's like it's close to a Hefeweizen. And Wicked I Weed. I do enjoy that. And Wicked Weed traditionally has flavors that taste a little bit like uh, another green herb. That is not a hop. Um, it's a wicked weed, some might say. But that doesn't have it's any of the favorite. flavors there. Yeah, uh, it's, I it's, enjoy those beers, but Molly is not her favorite. Too traditional one. Not usually, but this is delicious. And lastly, the Goose Island Beer Hug IPA. Hazy IPA. I'm not going to lie to you. When I read it, I thought it said Bear Hug, and I was very excited. Um, but it wasn't. That is a different. There is a there is a beer that called Bear Hug, and I like the cans. That's a very good hazy IPA. Oh yeah. I've had some folks in the past DM me and ask me what the difference was between a hazy IPA and a standard IPA, and I know that there is a scientific definition. For me, it's mouthfeel. A hazy IPA sort of like lingers a little bit longer. It's a little bit of a thicker beer, whereas a standard IPA is crisp and light and snappy. Uh, and a lot more refreshing than a, than a hazy. I like hazy IPAs better. They tend to be uh, less hoppy in to me. And it's not as aggressively hoppy. Yeah. yeah, and that's delicious. All three, this was a really good beer flight, I think. Good pick. Good pick. In keeping with tradition, we are bypassing funnel cakes because it is not my favorite. In fact, I've gone on record saying that I think it's pretty trash and mid. Uh, <laughs> but if you do like funnel cake, if you don't share Alan's insane opinion. Whoa! There's a tiramisu mini funnel cake at the festival this year, which is nice. You know what that means? More tiramisu funnel cakes for those who enjoy it. What I'm doing is a service. Yep. Anyway, uh, we're going to just keep on trucking to Japan instead. From Japan, we have picked up the Wagyu Tamaki Sushi. This is handheld sushi with sweet and savory American Wagyu beef topped with Takana Japanese pickles and spicy mayo sauce. Now, normally, when we come to Japan, we get the teriyaki chicken bun, and it's very good. But I wanted to try something new. This is very messy, and I am wearing white. Okay. Ooh, and there's still some heat in the back of my throat. The beef just cooked very well. It is both a little sweet and very savory for the Wagyu beef, and it is American Wagyu beef, not Japanese Wagyu. Otherwise, the price would be very different here. The pickles are nice and crisp, cut through a lot of the spiciness. The rice is cooked incredibly well. This is a great dish. This might go on my best of the fest. This is gonna be a cautionary tale though. If you do not like the flavor of nori, which is the seaweed on the exterior uh, of this particular roll, or you'll recognize it on uh, wrapped sushi that doesn't have the rice on the outside, but nori on the outside, 
this might be on first bite something you don't think you will enjoy. I beg of you to try it. You're not gonna taste the nori for that long. Very quickly, it's gonna make way to the spicy mayonnaise, rice, and wagyu beef beneath it. Give it some time. The, the nori is simply a way for you to get this to your mouth. Second bite, I got a whole host of ginger, and that adds a, whole, a new dimension to this, but also really adds a depth of flavor because it gives it some brightness too. I'm thinking this goes on my best of the fest. Now, you may be able to tell that we are in the Morocco pavilion, but we are not eating food from Morocco. I picked this up in Greece before it started raining. It has since basically stopped raining, so timed that perfectly. Uh, but this is one of my favorites every year. It's the griddled cheese from Greece. It is cheese that's been griddled, and then it's topped with honey and pistachios. This is part of Emile's fromage montage. Also, Morocco, delicious. I love the dips, the dip trio. We've had it in several other videos, but it's basically a year-round item at this point at Tangerine Cafe, so we're not stopping there with our festival budget, but cheers. This might be my number one best of the fest item, top of the list. It's this delicious nutty cheese that's topped with literal nuts that are crunchy, the pistachios, a little sweetness from the honey to balance out that kind of nutty saltiness. I love the texture of the griddled cheese. This is so good that if you love cheese, I insist you try it. Because of the rain, we have done a bit of a double play with Belgium and Brazil. I went and picked up the Belgian waffle with chocolate on top. Molly, what'd you end up grabbing? I went to Brazil, grabbed one of my favorites and the completer item of Emile's Fromage Montage. The, I'm trying to say this correctly. I don't think I've said it correctly before, but I always try au de queijo. Au de queijo? Au de queijo. Au de queijo. Brazilian cheese bread. Look at this. It's just the cheesiest, most delicious bread. And it's made with tapioca flour. So my gluten sensitive friends, I believe you can eat this. And uh, it's one I pick up every year. and I love it every year. It's particularly good this year. Really, really cheesy, crispy exterior. It's just a nice, light, mild cheese, doughy, sticky bread, simple and delicious. And speaking of gluten-free, make sure you're following, if you do eat gluten-free, gluten-free Disney, and if you eat vegan, vegan Disney food. Those are creators that I know and love, and they're experts in those particular areas, so they are the people you need to go to if, if you need help in those areas. Before this whipped cream is exposed to more rain, I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece off of this delightfully fluffy Belgian wall. Am I gonna cut it or am I? Rich chocolate. That is 100% fresh whipped cream and a very light and fluffy waffle. And this is a nice portion size for dessert. It's also not sickly sweet. So I'm a big fan of this. Would eat again. Oh. Bonjour, we have made it to France, one of my favorite boulas to eat in any time of year here at Epcot. And we have picked up a dish that I'm gonna butcher in pronunciation so bad. The sweet cast member, I looked at the menu and I tried to pronounce it and he's like, just try your best. And then even he kind of smirked when I did it because I, I really tried, but I'm not good at speaking French. Uh, Molu, à oignon caramelisé et à fromage de chèvre which is an egg moyu with goat cheese and caramelized onions. Oh my gosh, do you see how much goat cheese this is? I feel like this looks like it's just gonna be like inside of quiche. It's just like the inside of a quiche without the crust. That's what it is. It's like light, fluffy, creamy eggs, delicious, goat cheese, which I love goat cheese, and there's a whole big chunk of her in the middle. Got to mix that in. And then you've got the sweetness from the caramelized onions, the little crispiness from the, the uh, burnt, not burnt, but um, caramelized cheese on top. It's like a quiche without crust. Delicious. Another Joffrey stop, this time at the one between Canada and United Kingdom. This is the hazelnut mocha latte. This is espresso, milk, hazelnut syrup, as well as dark chocolate, and then whipped cream and dark chocolate on top. Okay. 
It tastes a lot like the AP special one, which is not surprising. It basically is. It's just got the hazelnut flavor as well. It's fine if you want a sweet dessert style cocktail. These are going to be right up your alley. I drink black coffee, so this is too sweet for me for coffee purposes. But I would have this on a hot day in lieu of like hot chocolate lava cake somewhere. Our next stop is going to be Canada because this is a redemption tour for the Canada booth. Last year, we tried the filet and it was... I gotta be honest, it was a little mid. So we are going to try the filet again this year and see if it has totally redeemed itself. And right next door is the refreshment port, which has poutines. We've had some pretty good ones in the past and some pretty okay ones, but we're gonna skip that this time because they are typically more expensive than the other items that are on our list. So from Canada, we picked up the filet mignon with mushrooms, borson, garlic, and fine herbs, mashed potatoes, and borson, garlic, and fine herbs, butter. Let's dig into it. The mashed potatoes, borson butter, and mushrooms are all very good. The beef is certainly better than it was last year, but it is still a little dry. So it has improved compared to last year. Do I think it's worth $10 still? No, certainly not for this portion size. But if you are coming to Canada and are going to get something, you can't go wrong with that cheddar soup. We've done another little double dip. I stopped by Swirled Showcase, which is where the temporary Starbucks was at one point and has a variety of desserts. Alan went to one of the new booths, Forest and Field, and we have come together with this beautiful, cheesy dessert-based tablescape. From Swirled Showcase, I got the liquid nitrogen frozen sweet potato mousse. It's got candied pecans and maple caramel sauce, and she was making them right there. It's so cool to watch. It, like drops this clump of the mousse into a bucket of liquid nitrogen and it freezes and then she crumbled it with a hammer. It's very exciting. And then from Forest and Field, we have maybe the thing I was most excited to try brand new this season, the pumpkin mascarpone ravioli. It's got sage brown butter, pecorino cheese, and a hazelnut praline. This is on the fromage montage, but we are overachievers and we've already crossed that off. Also, more cheese, of course. This is burrata with seasonal fall fruit, spiced pecans, apple puree, and a fig vinaigrette. Pumpkin girly. Oh, yeah. Pumpkin girly living her pumpkin life. This is delicious. Tastes like house-made pasta. We've got a nice, sweet pumpkin puree inside there. Very autumnal, my favorite word this time of year. And then you've got the little crispiness from the nuts on top to be a different uh, texture contrast. And then I like the nutty cheese, uh, which is breaking up some of that sweetness as well. This is delightful. And I'm so glad that it tastes like fall, even if it doesn't always feel like it in Florida in August. Continuing with the cheese, gonna get some of this burrata here. Does this look like a pear? Yeah. Is this a pear? Yeah. I don't always love pears, but. See how we feel today. I love fig though, and I love candied nuts. I, this is not gonna be very graceful. She was correct, everybody. It was not very graceful. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I just don't like pears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm happy you've learned something <laughs> again. I'm not loving this puree either. Here, try this. Tell me what that is. It's apple. It tastes like applesauce. I don't like applesauce either. That is an apple puree. I don't like applesauce. It tastes like applesauce. It's a texture thing for me because I love apples. But bra is delicious. Figs are delicious. Pomegranate seeds. Pomegranate seeds. Candied walnuts are delicious. Here's my problem with this dish. Candy pecans. Candy pecans. Pecans? Pecans. Here's my problem with this delish. It's just a bunch of stuff on a plate, if I'm being honest. It doesn't feel very cohesive. It's just like a lot of fall flavored things on one plate. I wish it had like some kind of toasted something to put some of this on. Um, this one's not my favorite. I think the other one is a, a better dish. All right, let's dig in here. Before I even get into the description, that's best of the best for me. And there is no question. This is perhaps one of the best desserts I've eaten at a festival in years. Um, you need to love the flavor of sweet potato because that is very prevalent here. It is a very light, I'm talking very almost airy dish, quite cold, which is great on a hot day, mm. covered in a light drizzle of maple, and then with those spiced pecans, pecans on top. This is a three ingredient, three ingredient dish that is complete, and it is so very refreshing. And I thought, frankly, it was gonna be way too heavy. I could not be more happy to be more wrong. It tastes like fall on a plate. Mm-hmm. Mm. Now up next on our list, 
would-be simmering sips, which features mimosa flights. Now, to me, those are a bit too sweet and to Molly as well, so we'll not be picking those up. However, Molly has just left to go and redeem the fromage montage because we have completed and gotten all of our stamps, and she's going to go and get the redemption dish. And I know she's excited because it's more cheese. Picked up our award for reward award. Both. All the above. Honestly, it's just an honor to eat cheese. Um, and for the Emile's Fromage Montage, you get this very cute little plastic cup that you can rinse out and reuse. And it's got an exclusive blueberry cheesecake soft serve swirl with a little cheesecake piece on top there. Ooh, slightly different from years past. But I don't think it's always had the blueberry. It's always been the cheesecake soft serve. That soft serve is lovely. I like the cheesecake side more than the blueberry side. It's not going to be the most amazing thing you have, but it is a nice prize. Cute little cup that you can reuse. And I always like doing these little crawls. I say it every time because it maybe makes you try something you wouldn't have before. Or in my case, I'm already eating a bunch of cheese. I like to be uh, rewarded for that. And again, you don't have to eat all, it all on the same day. And you can get multiple of the same thing. And then just, you know, save your desserts, uh, your dessert stomach space for this. You start walking your way. I'll start walking mine. We'll meet in the middle, neath the Remy food and wine sign. I'm singing a song. It's a country song about meeting in the middle, which we just did with all this food. Let's put another shrimp on the barbie. Let's not. Australia. Austria. Well. <laughs> Austria. Well. We're an Epcot International Food and Wine Festival first, I think because of how we've routed. We are on the edge of a planter for our table, so naturally that means it is planter table time. It's planter table time. Ba -ba -dum. A shrubbery. Now, on this tag team effort, Molly went to Australia and picked up a new shrimp disc. This is the grilled bushberry spiced shrimp skewer with sweet and sour vegetables and a coconut chili sauce. I went to Hawaii and picked up the goaded dish, slow roasted pork slider with sweet and sour dole, pineapple chutney, and spicy mayonnaise, and a new addition to their menu, the Maui Brewing Company Orange Mango Guava Hazy IPA. Scrimpies. Just bite it off the barbie and then pull the tail off. Mm, this is fantastic. It's got some heat, which I'm always delighted to find. Nothing over the top, but definitely more than I expected, but it's balanced really nicely by this sweet berry glaze. A bush berry, I just looked up, but it's a berry native to Australia, which is not surprising. Uh, our Australia friends, maybe you can share how else you use it down in the comments. Um, I don't really taste coconut, which the sauce was supposed to have coconut in it. I wish I could taste that a little bit more, but it's kind of like a fun play on coconut shrimp. I also love that it's grilled and not fried because we've had a couple different battered shrimps today. Honestly, this might go on my best of the fest. If you're a seafood person, this is something I would try. It's been a long year waiting for this. After all that time, where has it led me? Back to this. Nope. It's just the little things that matter. The pork is cooked well. I was worried, I'm always worried every year that I'm going to have pork that's dry. And every year I've been pleasantly surprised that it's not because when you're batch preparing pork, it is just like chicken. It is so easily uh, overcooked and can become dry. I actually think this is better than last year because last year was sopping wet. The light spicy mayo on top of the pork that's cooked very well in pineapple, low and slow. And then you have the, the minced pineapple on top, creating that delicious chutney all on top of a very sweet wine roll. This is a little bite of heaven to me. And what better to wash it down with than a crisp beverage? Woo! Beer, this please. is money, please. This is very much a traditional IPA. You are going to taste the hops. Look at that view, hard to beat. You are going to taste the hops. It is going to be very piney, but it's nice because the mango. You don't really taste overt mango. What you get is a fruity sweetness that helps cut through that really, really nicely. That is a dangerous beer because that's one I could see myself sipping on and just not knowing how many I've had just because of how smooth it goes down. Next up, we have the PB&J Latte from the last Joffrey's in World Showcase, the one right as you enter on the Mexico side. It's a PB&J Latte, which is interesting sounding. It's made with espresso, milk, peanut butter, and raspberry syrup and garnished with some whipped 
creme. I should note you can make any of these coffees boozy, but none of them felt like the right thing to make boozy so far. Hello? Well, I'll be. Huh. I'm not tasting a ton of the raspberry. I mostly taste nuttiness in with an iced latte. It's pretty good. It It's not as sweet as other peanut butter coffees I've had. In fact, that makes me like it a little bit more. This is the best one so far. I'm, I'm tickled by this. Won't you join me in the place I currently am? Harvest Hollow. For some reason, it just sounds like a place Moira Rose would go. It just seems like somewhere the cast of Sunrise Bay would go in the fall to drink apple cider and look at leaves and enjoy other autumnal activities. And it is here at Epcot in this newly kind of redone outdoor space that's got the nice turf. They've got like hula hoops out and stuff for kids to play with. And there's two booths right here, Milled and Mold, as well as Bramblewood Bites. I do love that they're leaning into a fall aesthetic at the festival this year. From Milled and Mold, we have picked up the freshly baked carrot cake with walnuts and cream cheese icing. I believe this is supposed to be the carrot cake I have loved for many years that's usually served in whatever booth is in America. So let's hope it's as delicious as it has been in years past. From Bramblewood Bites on our list, we had this, which is grilled bison with butternut squash puree, roasted mushrooms, and a huckleberry gastrique. But someone else went off book this time, and I'm not shocked to see he's returned with a spiced apple old-fashioned inspired cocktail with Boyd and Blair rum. Really leaning into fall here. Oh. All right, let's dive in to the bison here. Mm. Mm. Some of the mushrooms as well. Mm. Okay, well, that's very strong, earthy flavors. The mushrooms are incredibly earthy, which is why I understand they've paired them with this berry reduction and squash. But the bison itself is a very lean meat. This is cooked really well. Very tender. That bite, a little bit less so than my first one. I gotta be honest, I think I understand where they were going with this. It's just not my favorite in terms of execution. It feels like it's a lot of very individual, distinct flavors that are really cool existing in their own pockets. I like that it's fun. And potentially even one or two of these com combined together would be really tasty. But all at, all at once, this is a lot for my brain to process. <laughs> so I'd probably skip this one. I gotta be honest, I definitely broke the budget with this. Oopsies. I also bought something extra. Because it says it's an apple cider inspired old fashioned, and it's made with rum. And I have questions. Questions that need answers. Mm. Oh, that's, oh, that's so sweet. It's like juice. This is certainly apple. It uh, it has a lot of that mold spice flavor to it, like that sort of like allspice uh, or clove situation. I just wish. Oh, there's so much candy fruit in the bottom too. I just wish that there was more rum to cut through a lot of that very rich sweetness. Uh, but even with that, I don't know what else I would add other than like a little bit of like an acrid bite, bourbon perhaps. <laughs> All right, let's cut into this cake. It doesn't seem as good as yours past because it doesn't seem like it's warm. Are you proved wrong? I wish it was warm. If you like carrot cake, this is a really good carrot cake. It's got all the autumnal seasonings like cinnamon and clove and nutmeg. It's got that light sweetness in the cake, but it is balanced out by this pretty sweet frosting on top or icing on top. I'm glad there's not too much of it because otherwise it'd be too sweet for me. Overall, it is delicious, but I don't think it's as good as years past because it's usually served warm. However, if you like carrot cake, it's worth a try. And while Molly takes her thumbnails and we are at Earth Eats, I am going to once again go on my allergy spiel. If you do have a food allergy, please 
talk to the cast members when you are purchasing your meals at the food and wine booths. They will be more than happy to call to the chefs and figure out if they can accommodate you or if they cannot accommodate you based upon your allergy or dietary requirements. We just did it here at Earth Eats. It was a really quick phone call. They took care of it so fast for us. We got to engage and chat with the cast members for a little bit. Found out that I'm good to eat this delicious spray short rib. So just ask and know the cast members are more than willing to help. Now from Earth Eats, we have picked up the red wine braised beef short rib with goat cheese polenta, puttanesca sauce, shaved pecorino, and petite herbs, as well as the lemon poppy seed cake with lemon icing. And just look how cute that is. This is the poppy seed cake dance. No, this is the short rib dance. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the short rib dance. I'm very excited about this. This looks amazing. And I love short ribs, and I love polenta. And I love cheese, so don't let me down, Dish. Ooh, look at all that polenta. That meat broke apart shockingly easy. Gonna get some, oh, extra, it over here. some extra of the cheese. Special, special. Oh my God. Ooh. We've been to so many booths that they're all starting to meld together, but I feel pretty confident this is the best meat dish I've eaten today. I'm getting a nod from behind the ca camera and a thumbs up from Alan. This is a fantastic dish. First of all, I think the portion size is pretty generous. Um, the short rib fell apart, not only with my fork, but melted right in your mouth, cooked beautifully. And it's balanced nicely by the saltiness of the cheese on top, the natural sweetness from the tomato. And then you've got a lot of this creamy, delicious goat cheese polenta. Uh, this is phenomenal. If you are a meat eater, put this one high on your list. Definitely best with best for me. And now I'm going to try this lemon poppy seed cake. Let's go ahead and... Take a little bit of a piece off the side here. The icing is lemon as well. That's really good. Wow. I think Earth Eats crushed it this year. Oh my gosh. The lemon poppy seed cake itself, very moist, very light. You get the itty bitty crunch of the poppy seeds if you're looking for it in the cake. The best part is there's not an overwhelming amount of icing. The icing is sweet, don't get me wrong but it's also not overpowering the lemon. It's only serving to enhance that lemon flavor. This is incredible. Wow, I'm in a good place. And in breaking news, you heard it here first. This cake has unseated the carrot cake as the best dessert for me and my favorite cake at Food & Wine. And I like that it's garnished with an edible flower that clearly came from the land greenhouse right there. All right, well, we only have a few booths left and one of those is Coastal Eats. Now. That one only has two things on the menu, food-wise. Neither of those are any of our favorites, so we're not going to order something that neither of us like to begin with. But what we do like is coffee. So we are headed to Molly's final Joffrey's stop of the day. She's caffeinated up. She's buzzing. Let's go get this coffee roundup done, shall we? All right, the final Joffrey's taste test. This is from the cart right outside of Guardians of the Galaxy. It is the coconut mocha latte. So you've once again got a little bit of Sabrina Carpenter. Me espresso. It's espresso. I'm... You know the song? Snaps from Molly. I'm trying. I'm cool. To be fair, you did a great job. Did I? Uh, anyway, espresso, milk, coconut syrup, dark chocolate topped with whipped cream, toasted coconut, and more dark chocolate. Hold on. This is delightful. As a cocoa nut lover, it's like a small, if, if a Samoa was a coffee, it would be this coffee. It's not super chocolatey though. I was worried about that. I'm mostly tasting the cocoa nut. If I were to give this again, which I actually would, I would modify it just a little bit. I wouldn't get the toppings because I don't personally love whipped cream, like out of a can. And I would go a little bit lighter on the milk. But honestly, if you like coconut, uh, imagine again, a Samoa as coffee and it is this dream. Hey, look at these cars. Hey, you want to buy a Chevy? Don't worry, you still can't drive these around. Exactly. You can't buy this one, but if you wanted to look at one and maybe forget about it before you get home, they should sell these cars because some drunk person would buy a car from Epcot, I promise you, know you right now. All right, there are only two booths that we have not explored left, the Fry Basket and Flavors from Fire. Turns out, when you don't come opening day, you get through the booths a lot faster because the lines are a lot shorter. Everybody's kind of figured it out, like the, the culinary teams and, and all the cast members have figured out the flow and what needs to happen. It's just, I've said it before, I've said it many times, if you can avoid going to the first day of something, 
you're probably going to have a better experience. And we normally budget two full days to do food and wine, and we've only needed today. That said, quite full. So we're going to skip the fry basket. We actually plan to skip this one anyway, just because, again, it is the same as last year. And while that fry flight is delicious, saving room for some new items. And there is one here at Flavors from Fire that looks, well, fire. We'll put the fry flight on that honorary returning delicious menu to keep on your radar. And from our final booth of the day, we are at Flavors from Fire, and we have picked up the Steakhouse Blended Burger. This is a beef and wild mushroom slider with truffle brie cheese fondue, arugula, and truffle potato chips on a sesame bun. I read that when I first started looking at these menus and my mouth started to water, and I am excited that it is finally here. Cheers. This is a very solid addition to the burgers. I don't know if I'd call this a burger because the patty is very much just with ground beef and mushroom all together. But this is a solid, solid dish. I would 100% go back for this again, just as a bite to grab and go. The beef is tender, mixed with the mushrooms, coming together, adding that nice, rich umami flavor. Don't be so quick on this one. <laughs> Thanks. On top of that, you've got the truffle beer cheese, which, which is, I mean, all of those words are delicious and on here, it makes it even better. And also, everybody knows about the sandwich chip, right? We're all on the sandwich chip train. We all do this. If we don't, please do me a favor. Next time you make a sandwich, go get a bag of your favorite chips. It doesn't have to be your favorite. Maybe just a bag of Lay's or whatever your Lay's equivalent is. Put those on top of the sandwich before putting that bread on top. Crush that down. Sandwich chips will change your life. Delicious. I would like to note two things. One, they are making these burgers to order. So there was a little bit of a backup because they were literally grilling them fresh right next to the booth. So as always, pack those patient pants when you're coming to the festivals because uh, they are making all of this to order. And two, the burger is good, but I don't think it's as good as the corned beef chips, which have been a festival fave of mine for years. Those are back on the menu, but once again, we opted to try something new. Um, but the, the chips with the corned beef and the beer cheese fondue, those to me are really the creme de la creme. And if I wasn't so full right now, I'd go back and order them even though we already broke our budget. Um, but those are definitely going to be on my musty list next time I'm at Epcot. Now, before we get to our official best of the fest choices, we're going to pop right into here, Creation Shop, to check out the merchandise for the festival. Now, as with many of the festivals, we've got a couple of different merchandise collections featuring different characters, Mickey, Minnie, Figment, and Remy. Starting over here with Figment's collection, we have Figment Turvis. Figment salt and pepper shaker that you can have mini trash can table time on. Figment mug. Figment t-shirt. Figment button down. Different Figment t-shirt. Figment lunchbox. Figment spirit jersey. Figment lounge fly. Figment ears. Figment corksicle. Moving right along into actually this kind of classic logo collection. No characters on here that I can see. Oh, a few things might have Mickey or Minnie on them. Uh, but we've got a food and wine mug with little spoon. Very cute little design on the inside. Love that. Another salt and pepper shaker for trash can table time. Porksicle stemless wine glass. Mini Mickey plate. I say mini Mickey because it's shaped like Mickey, but it has mini on it. Polo. Cutting board. Spaceship Earth wine stopper. Magnetic frame. Coasters with one of each character design in a set. Different stemless wine glass. Tray to carry around the festival. Spaceship Earth hat that is branded food and wine on the back, but otherwise it's just Spaceship Earth, but it kind of looks like Spaceship Earth has legs. She's being dainty. Long sleeve t-shirt, short sleeve shirt, different short sleeve shirt. Moving right along, we've got a Mickey spatula, Mickey and Minnie pot holders and oven mitt set, Mickey apron, plush Mickey, measuring cups, decorative towel, Mickey t-shirt, mini tank top, Mickey magnet. Also some fun Epcot goodies. We've got small human Epcot Muppet Lab shirt and larger human Muppet Labs Epcot shirt. Might have to take that home. Oh my gosh, is this the best merchandise Epcot's ever made? It's a Muppet Labs Beaker wine glass. Yes, please. And Beaker was in fact a pun because I mean it's shaped like a science experiment beaker but also beakers on it. Moving on to the collection featuring everyone's favorite little chef, you've got a Remy lug crossbody, Remy ornament, Remy cutting board, Remy kitchen timer, Remy t-shirt, couple of pass holder exclusives like this Mickey and Minnie pass holder shirt, Pass holder glasses, Figment and Spaceship Birth Edition. Pass holder glasses, Remy and Mickey and Minnie Edition. And pass holder hat. We've also got a variety of magnets here. You've got Figment pass holder, Remy pass holder, Figment not pass holder, different Figment not pass holder, Remy not pass holder, Mickey not pass holder, general logo, and we're done. 
And last but certainly not least, we have a whole rack of food and wine pins. We have mystery pin set, key and mini pass holder pin, figment pass holder pin, logo pin, Muppet Labs pin, Remy pin, figment pin, mini pin, Mickey pin, and different Remy pin. And there you have it, your 2024 food and wine merchandise collection. Which item are you gonna get? Well, that brings us to the end of another fantastic Epcot International Food and Wine Festival. I honestly think this is one of the best food and wines that I've been to in several years. It was hard to come up with our best of the fest list because so much we had today was so delicious, but we've done the impossible and we have narrowed it down to our best of the fest. But before we get there, it's unfortunately time for worst of the fest. It is, it is time for that. Pickle seltzer. Yucky. Not for me, I don't like pickles. So, uh, okay, fine, I won't pick pickle seltzer. No, you can, no, no, no. Hot no, dog. No, 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 no. Hot dog. Put all 10 toes in the ground. Pickle seltzer and hot dog, <laughs> not for me. And for me, the worst of the fest has to go to, unfortunately, the apple cider old fashioned inspired it's cocktail. Fine. Yeah, it should have just been an old fashioned. You yeah. tried though, but well, you know what? You know. Snaps for trying. We like trying. Uh, but it did not get there. <laughs> Hi, it's us from here minutes later. We had sort of blocked out that we went to Italy and ate those really horrid nachos. Um, thanks for the air quotes, they were definitely needed. So I'm gonna go ahead and add as the absolute bottom of the fest, which is not a category I ever thought I needed until this evening. We made a new one. Yeah, there it is. Uh, it would be the nachos from Italy. Anyway, back to the best of the fest. <laughs> Now it is time for our best of the fest. Molly, let's start with yours. My number one best of the fest, the griddled cheese from Greece. Also, the tostada de camarones from Mexico. The schnickel noodlen nice. from Germany. The lemon cake was my best dessert from Earth Eats. And just a banger booth all around, the braised short ribs from Earth Eats. And an honorable mention to the shrimp from Australia. What about you? For me, my best of the fest are the tikka masala from India, the pierogi from Festival Faves, the wagyu tamaki from Japan, the sweet potato, the delicious sweet potato dessert from Swirled Showcase, and as always, the pork slider from Hawaii. Because there were more booze than there's ever been, we did not eat some of our returning favorites, but we've come up with a new special bonus part of Best of the Fest, and these are return. We're gonna work on it. We're workshopping the title, but right now it's um returning faves. Returning faves that we didn't get to eat today, but are excited to eat next time we come to Epcot, and you should put them on your list. You can see why we're workshopping that name. It's pretty long, and even the acronym is tough to get through. But those things for me are the smoked corn beef chips from Flavors from Fire. Mm -hmm and the pan-fried dumplings from China. And for me, those things are the pickle fries from Brew Wing and the Dip Trio from the Tangerine Cafe in Morocco. But we also want to shout out the best drink we had at the festival. Couple honorable mentions, loved that lemon zest beer in Germany as well as the Poguano Margarita in Mexico. But the best overall was the beer flight in America. And the pickles. <laughs> Well, there's only one thing left to do here at the Food and Wine Festival, and that is go enjoy the seasonal light show on Spaceship Earth. Luckily for all of us, they kept the beautiful lights on Spaceship Earth that were put up for the 50th anniversary. And when dusk falls here at Epcot, they do little light shows that are so amazing and so beautiful. They have a couple that they rotate through all the time, but for the different festival seasons, they add in a special one. And during Food and Wine, it's Be Our Guest. You may be able to tell that dusk is falling now, uh, so we're gonna make sure we see that before we go, and you should too. Oh, and one more thing, as we wait for the Be Our Guest show, we did want to mention that uh, this was our total for the day. We have fallen into the same Epcot trap as many of you, and that is blowing your budget. Yeah, big time blew the budget. But you know what, there were a few items that we saw, and once you laid eyes on them, they were too good to pass up trying, and they did mean we got to review a few extra things, and hopefully that was helpful. But hopefully this was a realistic look at what 200-ish dollars gets you at Food & Wine. And don't forget, as a pro tip, if you are using the Disney dining plan, much all the food counts as a snack on the dining plan. And there are things that are $9, 10 11 $12. Very good use of a snack. So if you're on the dining plan, save those snack credits and use them here on the high dollar items. Okay, now, lights. Good timing.
But until next time, friends, thanks for hanging out with us. Be sure to like this video, subscribe if you are new, follow us on all of our socials, and if you would like to join us on Discord to chat with the Man Fam, please join us there. We'd love to have you. Links for all that are down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. I'm Alan. And it has been so magical. I am so full. Same. <laughs> Bye. Bye.